I hope that you can see this, but uh, the way I had to uh, sit my camera, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, but uh, I need both hands, kind of. But what I'm going to show is, because i got to hold this freaking light, but what I'm going to show is some playing around I've been doing with the uh, magnet biasing, I guess that's what they call it, but I've got this motor over here, it's like a, basically a test, test set up. And uh, maybe you can see it. I've got one, two, three, four run coils, and one, two, three, four gen coils. Two trigger coils, one right here, there's a little thing, and another one over here. You probably can't see it. But uh, I have it set up so two are pushing, two are pulling. And uh, I've been playing a lot with uh, adding magnets to the cores. All of these are air cores. But I have. Uh, some different ferrites that I can add in them that I'm playing with and uh, number one what's interesting is adding ferrite to any of these coils decreases the draw a lot but uh, what I've noticed is while it seems to be a give or take scenario where adding the magnet to the uh, core can help uh, reduce cogging is what they call it. What I've noticed really what it is is it changes the uh, inductance of the generator coil. So what happens is you're either going to generate more or generate less. And when you're changing the inductance so you generate less, of course there's less lens and the rotor will go faster, which is what people uh, get this less cogging from. Likewise, you can reverse the polarity and get it to induct a little bit more, but then there's going to be a little more lens and the rotor is going to slow down some. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show one thing that I thought was interesting. A couple things. One, I have these separated. I have two transistors, so uh, two coils are pushing, two coils are, are pulling. And I have them separated with switches. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, start it up with just the uh, pushing coils running. So I'm not doing any pulling, just doing pushing. Maybe you can still see the draw. Fifty milliamps, still going, still rising. Okay, now this magnet here is attached to the trigger coil core of this run coil, so these two are firing. And uh, what's interesting is the addition of this magnet does not change the draw, but it actually increases the speed at certain, at certain RPMs. So I'm going to switch back to here. And you can see that the draw, I'm, I'm removing the magnet, doesn't make a difference. Makes the needle jump ever so slightly, but it stays the same. However, I can hear the rotor increase. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the, uh, the pull coils on. That just increased my draw to over 200, about 225, 230. And now I'm going to switch off the push coils. So now I'm just pulling, and I'm pulling 175 milliamps. But, if you observe the needle, it's going to move down ever so slightly because I'm adding a neo magnet. When I remove this magnet, the draw goes up a little bit. When I add this magnet, the draw goes down maybe a few milliamps. 
but it increases the speed. I can hear it, maybe you can't. It increases the speed though, okay, so take note of that. Which doesn't make sense because this circuit is off. Okay, the magnet that I have attached to the, uh, the coil right there is attached to a coil that's not even firing. So you have to wonder why that's working. Okay, switch it back on. Everything is firing again. Get this camel right. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this, uh, this ferrite coil, and I'm going to add it to this coil right here. And watch what happens to the draw. I can bring the draw down to about 175, okay? But the rotor slows down, you can hear that. So, what happens when I use the same core, whoops, but I have a, uh, a magnet on it, okay? Roughly the same thing. Okay. Let me reverse the polarity. Okay. Opposite polarity. Now it won't bring it down below 200 milliamps. Before it would bring it down to about 175. Now it only brings it about maybe 215. But the speed doesn't decrease. Okay, now listen. Speed remains the same with a minimal decrease in draw. Okay. Now let me remove this magnet and insert the core just enough to reduce the draw to the same amount as before. Now I've reduced the draw to the same amount, but you can really hear the rotor slow down. Okay, you see? That's about 215 milliamps. Put the magnet back on, bring it back down to 215. Ah, see? However, the rotor maintains the speed. I don't know if you can hear that. So that's pretty interesting. Okay. Okay, but now moving on to another subject. Here's the generator coil. When I short it out, you hear lens take effect. Lens is a badass dude, okay? You hear lens taking effect. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to short this coil out. Shorted the coil out. You hear lens taking effect. So, what happens when I add a magnet to the ferrite of this generator coil? Okay. You hear that speed increasing, right? That's awesome, right? No, it's not. I did another experiment, maybe I can show it, but I've actually decreased the inductance of this generator coil, so therefore it's generating less energy, therefore there's less lens. So I haven't decreased any cogging effect really, I've just decreased the amount of lens that's traveling through the coil. 
or traveling out of the coil. I mean, that, that, that's as simple as it is. So when I remove this magnet and it slows down, that's just because it's now generating more energy, more lens. Generating much more. I did this with a light bulb. I saw this with a light bulb. Adding the magnet can be, I can also increase the uh, inductance by adding it to the opposite polarity. Right now it's the opposite polarity. It's actually slowed down even more and now I would be generating a little more. So now put it the other way again. Speeds up. It's nothing special though. I'm just uh, generating less. This, this is what I found to be the case. But anyways, that's basically all I wanted to show. Appreciate it.